Today, we're gonna demo the one project guaranteed to get you a software job. Before we get started, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notification of all the great content we're pushing out here at Coder Foundry. A couple of months ago, we released a video called The One Coding Project Guaranteed to Get You a Software Job. That's linked up here if you want to go check it out. That video has been viewed a couple of hundred thousand times, and, and we're kind of amazed by that, that you would spend that much time watching our video. But I think it has resonated with you as an audience that you know that if you had this software project, you probably could get a job, and that's why it's been so successful. When we interacted with you on the comments, a lot of you are asking some very detailed questions about the project, and how do you go about building it. A lot of you ask for source code. Now, I'm not going to give you source code to this project because I think it's very important that you build this by yourself. But I am going to demo a real project from Coder Foundry and look at a bug tracker from a real student who's getting ready to graduate. And I think this is kind of revolutionary if you know anything about boot camps. A lot of times they try to keep this in-house or keep it secret. I don't want to do that. I want to give you all the information that you can have to be successful because I want you to get that first software job. So we're gonna demo a real bug tracker from a real student who's getting ready to graduate right now. The only thing I ask is just be, be mindful of the comments. This is a real student, he's just like you, trying to break in, trying to get that first software job. So be nice with any kind of constructive criticism that you may have about the project. However, I think it's pretty good, and I think you'll be pretty impressed by what this student has done. He didn't code before he got here, and now he's built this bug tracker, and he's getting ready to get that first software job. So let's look at the bug tracker that one of these students that we have here at Coder Foundry has just created. I want you to take a moment to look at what we're talking about a bug tracker and what it is and the scale and scope of it. Many of you said it would take a year to build. Many are saying it's too hard. Um, many are, don't understand exactly what the scale and scope is or even what how to go approach building one. So this demo of a real life student project um, coming out of our school right now today, getting ready into the market here in the next week or so. What I'm going to do is show you real quickly how this works. Now, the one thing that we do at Coder Foundry and what your bug tracker should do is actually it has to be published. So this is on a live server. Um, and so that anyone can can go to the URL, look at it, and play around with it. One of the things that we do here, and I think you should do for any kind of project that you would put out, and if it needs a login, which I think every project that you put out should have a login because it demonstrates um, authentication, authorization, a very critical skill in full stack web development, um, is have demo user accounts. Let me just show you kind of what that is. So I'm gonna click here. So the person looking at your application doesn't have to create an account or register or give me your email or anything like that. They can just demo the functionality by just clicking and everyone's going to click on the admin. And it takes you right into the app. Um, what this student has done, it doesn't allow you to save any changes so that he doesn't have um, kind of um, bad data going into his um, his demo app. So what I want to do is just show you kind of also how this works after you already have a kind of um, an account and what I've done I've, I've created myself account here I'm gonna sign in as me and um, he's allowed me to be admin on his site and we're gonna look at it so the first thing we did with the bug tracker is we created this dashboard and these are um, if you don't know what a bug tracker is you basically have um, a couple of con concepts in here one is a project and a project is a collection of tickets and the tickets or the issues are the defects or the feature requests inside of that particular project. Um, and you can see here on the left and right, he's also got role assignment and manage um, users as well. So you need to manage your users coming in and assign them to different roles. And I think that's very important. If we click on this and we'll look at it real quick, is that um, you can add the users that are registered on your site and then you can select from your roles that you want them to have. And he's got several roles here set up. And you just hit submit and you add them in there, okay? You also can search for users right here. Um, and so that's one of the things that you need to do is have um, user management and role management in your project. So let's look at the project tab. And here the project is, what I want you to think of is a collection of tickets. So it's a high level um, kind of object that's gonna be in your project. And this is project one. And you can see here, 
Um, what he's done is he's also, we, we teach a blog project, a bug tracker project, and a portfolio project, and he's managing his issues for his projects as he goes through a boot camp. And I think this is a really powerful thing that you can show off in an interview situation. But I'm going to look at his um, the demo project here we've set up. I'm going to click details here. And in here, we can see who's assigned to the project. So um, users are assigned to projects. And then the tickets for the projects, we can see the individual tickets for this project. And then it has a description and a project name. So that is the project object pretty much. And you can guess from here that uh, you can, um, what you need to do as far as modeling this. And of course, this has some really cool kind of search functionality here um, and those types of things. So they're all start with D, but let's say if I did J here, you can see how it filters this list. And um, so it's kind of cool, kind of nice functionality here that you can do. You also have um, a way to get to the actual ticket right here. So let's click on that. And so now this is what we call um, a ticket. And so now we can look at the ticket and we can see the status, the type, the priority, what project it's on, who's it assigned to, who submitted it. Um, inside of our bug tracker, we come up with significant roles like an admin can do everything. A developer can um, change the status of a ticket. A submitter can um, actually create new tickets on a project. And then there's project managers who can assign users and um, developers to projects. So that's kind of our high level things there. We also keep up with comments. And so like if I wanted to add a comment here, um, keep on plugging in your code, you're getting there. And um, I just want to say, I want to see more gray on the dashboard. That was one of the things that um, actually I asked him to do to change. So I'm going to put a comment right here. And you also can look at the ticket history. Now, what we're doing with history here is um, kind of one of the things that we want to track is anytime there's a change to any kind of object, we want to track the property, the old value, and the new value, and the date that it's changed. Um, and also probably the user that changed it. Um, history tracking is very important to a lot of systems, say in accounting and things like that. So we want people to start learning these kind of capabilities when they'll need to push that into other systems, not necessarily bug trackers. Um, you can ob obviously upload an image here or some kind of document, and I think that's critical. A screenshot for a bug tracker or something like that. Um, leaving comments about it is very important. And then you also can edit this overall ticket property here, which means I can um, change the status to something like in progress. I could change the developer. I could change the title, the description, um, what type it is. Sometimes, um, you know, if the user submits a ticket, as you know, if you've worked in the development environment, everything comes in as high, but the developer may reclassify that ticket priority. So you can change that here. So I'm just going to change this to update. And then so we've, we've um, updated that status. And when it does, it takes me to a list of all the tickets that are in the system. Um, and so that's kind of interesting. And so I can also search here. So I'm going to look for um, maybe mediums. I'll just type in the word medium. And you can see now um, it's filtered in this list in a really quick and easy way. And these are all the tickets that um, are in the system because I'm an admin. If I was a developer, you would see the tickets just assigned to me. If I was a project manager, you'd see all the tickets on a particular project I'm assigned to. And so that's kind of a bug tracker uh, pretty well, pretty easy. So you can sit here and look at the details here. Show you one more screen and we get right back at it. And you see where I have, I will have this fixed pronto. I was acting like I was a developer. Um, and that is a bug tracker. So what I hope that does is that it hopes that that can explain to you what we're talking about. And maybe that can give you a leg up on how to get this in your project, in your portfolio, so that you can show um, this to a potential employer. So that's an example of a bug tracker project we teach here at Coder Foundry. One thing I want you to be mindful of is not all the bug trackers that come out of the school look the same. We encourage students to bring their own creativity and their own ideas on how to solve this problem. And that results in multiple different types of UIs and templates and color schemes and whatever. So bring your creativity to the project. Don't just straight copy what this student has done. But I think it, hopefully it will give you enough information by looking at this demo 
combined with the video that we put out a couple of months ago to know now what you need to build. What I encourage you to do is build this project with the full stack language of your choice. Here at Coder Foundry, we teach MVC, ASP.NET with C Sharp. So if you would like to come to our school, we would be honored to be your teacher, your coach, and your mentor. Um, and if you want to start your journey, go to coderfoundry.com slash job roadmap. If you don't want to use C Sharp and you want to build this with Java, React, or whatever you want to do, feel free to do that as well. I think the project holds merit in whatever language that you work in, and you can show it to an employer learn to talk about it, learn to talk about it at a deep technical level, and show it to a hiring manager and get that first software job. I hope this helps you out. Good luck and keep coding.